Every time I come to Holy Cross, I think of two things. One is the historic legacy of this congregation. As I was reminded quite often, especially when I first came to the diocese, you all would say, welcome to the mother church of the diocese. And certainly, Holy Cross has a significant and important history, a legacy of faithfulness in the midst of often very difficult and tumultuous times. Again and again, you all have been called to step into the front lines of things that are going on, even, even when you had nothing to do with it. You were thrust into the midst of it anyway. The other thing that I think about when I think about Holy Cross is this wonderful link between profound intercessory prayer and a congregation that is deeply committed to prayer and for the interesting, innovative servant ministries that arise out of this life of prayer and caring that you all share together. It is appropriate that those be the things that mark a congregation that calls itself Holy Cross. I, I don't know what goes on in the minds of people when they try to figure out what a name ought to be for a congregation. But I never take it as coincidence. Instead, I take it as calling. That through whatever circumstances happen, an appointed name is given to a congregation. Then in many ways, I take it as a kind of vocational, okay, God, is this what you are asking of us? And with each, each succeeding generation, there's a deeper plummeting of what that might mean. And it seems to me that the lessons this morning give us a couple of things that I think are appropriate not only to speak of as it relates to the legacy of this congregation, but also to this new era into which you have been called in calling Dan Smith to be your priest and welcoming their family into the life of this church. One is a certain place of humility. You cannot be under the cross of Christ and still have any sense at all that it is by your might that you are getting things done. See, a part of the story of what we see in the cross is both God's judgment against sin, the extent to which he loves us, and therefore the humility into which we are invited to serve a savior who so profoundly humbled himself that he would subject himself to such an extraordinarily horrific and torturous death. Doing all of that on our behalf. No wonder that Paul writes in Colossians that who were we outside of Christ? We were dead in our trespasses and sins. Now, that's a pretty tough statement. We, most of us would like to say yes but to a statement like that. Yeah, but she's a really nice person. And other things like that that would somehow kind of qualify the finality of what it is that Paul is describing. But those who live under the cross of Christ say it and say yes and thank God that God did something about it in sending something to Jesus. There's no quibbling about the fact that somehow outside of the grace and power of Christ, I have nothing to offer and that even my best efforts to try to do something only get reflected on my own self-will. It is an act of dead self-exaltation to try to stand in a place of power under the cross of Christ and in objection to it. But to instead say yes, who was I? Outside of Jesus, I'd be dead in my trespasses and sins. But thank God he made me alive. He is making us alive. And therefore, all of the life and the power and the gratitude that flows out of us is in fact the fruit of his work within us for which we are extraordinarily grateful. That never changes. And because that's the case, when you come into a church that calls itself Holy Cross, it seems to me what you should be met with is the kind of kindness, the kind of hospitality, the kind of gentleness that says, yeah, we're, 
we're not one of those places where we like to look down on other people because we know better. We, we know who we are. Therefore, everybody's welcome here. We're not in the midst of proving ourselves that somehow one is a little bit more socially better off than another. Those are, that, that's the old put on air stuff that we know happens in some congregations. We've been on the receiving end of some of that. But here, we're a place that welcomes people because we know that being underneath the cross of Christ is a great leveler. That no one is any better than anyone else under the cross of Christ. And that all of us were dead in our trespasses and sins. And that Christ by his sacrifice is, thanks be to God, making us alive. Raising us up. Giving us a level of dignity and grace and power that we could have never ever had for ourselves. And, and this is the second thing, an extraordinary place of authority. Not authority to do what I want, but in fact the authority to serve and primarily through prayer. That's the other thing, that call to prayer that flows through these lessons from Abraham quibbling with God in a way that is both humorous and profoundly telling about God in terms of his compassion and his grace. There, there's, no, there's not the slightest bit of, okay, Abraham, I'll give you one more time in this back and forth for 10, for 20, and all of that. No, there's this wonderful, quiet graciousness about God as he responds to Abraham when he could have at any moment said, now who are you to keep talking to me like this? It's just not there in the text. Instead, what we get is Abraham, God listening carefully to Abraham and saying yes, time after time after time. And even when we don't know how to pray, the lovely line that ends the gospel reading, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Even when I don't know how to pray in the midst of the generosity of God, I say, oh Lord, I need the work of your Holy Spirit to give me what I need because I don't know how to pray. The invitation to ask is very wide, but I want to ask what is in accordance with your purposes. Holy Spirit, teach me how to pray about whatever it is that is in fact my concern. A part of what it means to be an intercessor before the cross is to both know the, the magnanimity of God, the glorious love that continues to say, come on, talk to me. I'm listening, I care. What happens in your life absolutely matters. And I want to use you in this calling to prayer to make a difference in the lives of other people. And I will teach you how to pray for one another and just as importantly for this community of which many of us are a part. Because one of the callings to intercession is not just a learning how to pray for my family, but it's how to pray for a community. We live in an era that if it is marked by anything, it is marked by fear. It is marked by uncertainty and a not knowing which way to go. And it is a tragedy that both of our presidential candidates, each in his and her own way, have tried to take on an almost kind of messianic pretension as if to say, I am the answer to your fears. <laughs> we know that's not true. To go before the cross is to say there's only one who is in fact the answer to our fears. And therefore as they pursue that kind of agenda that is in fact at cross purposes with the authority and power of Christ, we choose to enter in more deeply into this calling of prayer and service, asking God to help us to be salt and light in the community which, to which God has placed us. Even when we walk down the street to be available for God to use us, to pray for that person that catches our eye, to allow that leaven and that life to flow into this community through the praying compassionate life of a church that lives under the shadow 
of the very cross of Christ. That's who you are and who you have demonstrated yourself to be again and again and again. So, Dan Smith, please stand. Your charge. I would invite you to ask God to work in you the very things that I spoke of. That God would continue to work in you a greater and greater sense of both humility before the cross of Christ, a generosity and a kindness toward others. That you would ask God to teach you to plummet the depths of what it means to be called to intercessory prayer. Because it is in its own right of tremendous ministry and a ministry to which this church has been called. Ask God to help you lead in the ministry of intercession so that they may have eyes to see with you the vision to which God has called the life of this church. At the beginning of the liturgy, we talked about it expressed in here, discerning a vision together. That is, in fact, the fruit of prayer. The capacity to be able to see with the eyes of Christ that which is both out there that needs to be done and the equipment in here to learn how to serve and to serve together. To continue to uphold a legacy of a place where all are welcome, where none are better than anybody else, where we in fact learn to serve one another in love no matter who we are, where we've been, or where we come from because all of us are humbled before the cross of Christ. That this place in a community that needs it might know this church to be servants, compassionate, humble, and deeply powerful because of what God is doing both in them and through them. It's an enormous charge. The only right answer is, I will with God's help, but God will give it. He will give the Holy Spirit to all who ask and provide for you and for all of us all that we need to serve Him in a way that causes people to glorify Christ because of who we are and what we are doing. Amen.